say this. Uh, you that don't know it, we have a website here at the church, and uh, you can see this message. Every message that we uh, uh, that we preach uh, goes on that YouTube, and uh, Brother Ken gets it on there. All you got to do is go to uh, PineViewBaptist.com, and uh, uh, it'll take it'll direct you. Uh, when you see my big old fat picture, just click on it, and it'll take you down to my sermon. <laughs> But uh, I appreciate Ken for doing that so much. And, uh, he got another recorder back there today, so maybe, maybe we'll, uh, it'll do better than, than the other one did. All right, Isaiah chapter 28, if uh, beginning with verse 14, if correct to read, reads like this. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell we're in agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge and under falsehoods we have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of life. And the water shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it, uh, it shall take you. For morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night. And it shall be a, vex uh, a vexation only to understand the report. For the bed, and underline this verse, for the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than uh, uh, that he can wrap himself in it. Just a simple thought, the bed too short and the cover's too narrow. The bed's too short and the cover's too narrow. Now I want you to notice uh, kindly as we dissect this down and uh, try to break down what uh, Isaiah, what God is saying through Isaiah here uh, to the children of Israel, not only to the children of Israel, but I believe he's saying it to America today. Now I believe there's ever been a time and ever been a scripture that fit America. This scripture fits America today. He said, first of all under falsehoods, you've hid yourself. In other words, under false doctrine, uh, you've hid yourself. Uh, and uh, uh, he kind of pointed out as a, a man uh, drunk to the point that he don't know what he's doing. And I believe that America uh, is in that shape today. I don't believe we know what we're doing. Right. I believe we've got to the point now, uh, America as a whole, to where uh, she doesn't realize what she's doing. I believe that a nation that was founded under God, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice uh, for uh, uh, everyone, I believe that uh, when, we, uh, when, you, when you take out that nation under God, brother, you're in trouble. I don't care where you're at. And I believe the Bible, uh, the Bible said every nation that forgets God will be cast into hell. And I believe with all my heart, America's in trouble today. And I believe a lot of the reason is because uh, uh, they've made lies their refuge. Uh, uh, listen to me. Uh, uh, listen, false doctrine. Uh, there's more of it going around today than I ever yeah. seen in my life how uh -huh. uh, you turn on the television yeah. uh, and you hear more false doctrine today uh, yeah. than you do gospel how uh, uh, people yeah. have shunned yeah. away from declaring yeah. the whole yeah. counsel of God uh, uh, they don't want to hear the word of God they ain't going to hear it uh, yeah. if they have to lay out a church to keep from hearing it uh, uh, that's what they'll do yeah. uh, if you want to see yeah. folks 
folks. Uh, uh, brother, when uh, uh, if you want to see them go to the house, you wait till the gospel gets to hit them. Uh, yeah. uh, they'll either do one or two things. They'll either get right with God uh, yeah. or they'll get out. Uh, and yeah. today, folks are going home, brother, uh, uh, than, uh, than getting in the altar and getting things straightened yeah. out with God. Uh, uh, more church hoppers uh, uh, than I ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, they'll hop from one place to the other. Uh, yeah. uh, thinking uh, it'll be better yonder than it is here. Uh, but I want to tell you something. Uh, uh, brother, you can hop to church uh, from church to church all you want yeah. to. Uh, uh, but I believe that we ought to get settled, get established, uh, yeah. and we ought to stay with the stuff. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I, I believe there's never been a time that preachers need to just rear back and preach the gospel. Yeah. It's a day that we're living in today. Right. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we've got folks that are uh, so worried about their salaries and worried about this and worried about that till they pray to preach the gospel yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand something. You didn't hire me and you can't fire me. <laughs> Glory to God. God called me and he sent me here. Let me, I still believe what he said about when he said, I touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I still believe that that God is the same God today. And I believe when you go out of fooling with God's man, you better be careful about it. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but he said under falsehoods, yeah. false doctrines. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm telling you what's the truth. Everything in the world, people are believing everything. Right. Yeah. They they go into after Buddha and after Mohammed and yeah. after this and after that. I'm going to tell you something. There ain't but one true gospel. There ain't but one God. God Jehovah. And I'm telling you what's the truth. Uh, he is God. Uh, there's one Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and there's one Holy Spirit. God the Son. God the Father. Uh, God the Holy Ghost. They're all one. You can't separate them. Uh, they are God. Uh, and I'm telling you, if you ever want to uh, get to heaven, you've got to trust in God. Amen. He's the only thing that will get you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought about uh, as I was studying for this message and as uh, God was uh, dealing with me on this message, and I thought about uh, how, the, uh, how uh, folks today, they don't only err their self, but they're causing others yeah, to err in the mm -hmm. low down, ungodly way they're living. I'm telling you what's the truth. It used to be that Christians had some pride about their self. They wanted folks to look at them and they wanted That's folks right. to understand right. that God had made a change in them. They wanted folks to see the changes in them. Yeah. Uh, but nowadays you can't tell uh, them that claim to be Christian from the world. Yeah. They walk like them. They talk like them. They dress yeah. like them. They act yeah. like them. And then they come to the house of God and expect God to bless them. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, God can't do it. Yeah. He can't yeah. bless you. You, uh, when you're out there dabbling around mixed up in the world uh, I'm trying to I uh, just uh, listen uh, uh, how many folks do you hear today uh, oh I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven uh, and then you don't hear you don't see them they can't make it to the house of God uh, you might see them once a month uh, I'm here to tell you uh, that ain't a child of God God's children don't act that way uh, and they got that they convinced their self that they can live as good outside the church as they can inside the church. It's a lie the devil told it. You can't do it. You need fellowship with the church. And I'm here to tell you that unless America wakes up, unless the church wakes up, we're in trouble today. Amen. 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 This ain't popular preaching, but it's the truth. They're not only backslid their self, but they're causing a multitude yeah. to die and go to hell yeah. because of the rotten, low-down life they're living in front of them. Right. People look at them and say, if this is a Christian, I don't yeah. want no part of it. Yeah. And then they've, there's folks, now listen to me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make this as fast as I can. There's folks that 
uh, that think that, that service to God is going to get them to heaven. Mm. Let me tell you something. You can come to this church every Sunday morning, mm -hmm. every Sunday night. Right. You can work your fingers to the bone and still die and go to hell. Right. Right. Amen. Preacher, Amen. what are you talking about? I'm talking about unless the blood of Jesus has been applied uh -huh. to your yeah. heart, unless you've accepted Christ on the terms of salvation, right. Right. you're not going to heaven. I don't care how many right. churches you belong to. Yeah. I don't care if you're the chairman of the board of deacons or if you're the pastor behind the pulpit. Yeah. If you yeah. had not been saved by the grace of God, right. you're going to die and go to hell. Yeah. And yeah. you're yeah. not a child of yeah. God. And I'm telling you, if That's you right. are a child of God, you'll live differently right. than you did before. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. There's a lot of folks been deceived. Yeah. Satan's good at deception. Yeah. Some folks, now, how many, I wonder today, uh, how many folks that are out there depending on a deathbed confession? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. I want to live my life I'm going to enjoy life, and then yeah. when it comes down to my deathbed, then while I'm laying on my deathbed, I'm going to just ask the Lord to save me, yeah. and he's going to save me because he's obligated to. No, he's obligated to save you when he calls you, yeah. when he strives yeah. with you. Yeah. He's obligated yeah. to save you if you come to him. Yeah. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. God's able. He's willing, and he will save you, yeah. but you'll come under his condition yeah. and not we got folks running around today that telling folks all you got to do is believe. That's a lie and the devil yeah. told it. Jesus yeah. said the devil believed and trembled. Yeah. I'm telling you, you'll come to God on his terms. Amen. Or you won't come at all. Amen. We've got folks yeah. clouding this thing up and just telling folks, oh, you can just come whenever you get ready. Mm -hmm. Trying to put numbers on a board somewhere. Yeah. I'm here to tell you it ain't about numbers on a board. Yeah. It's about that name written down in the Lamb Book of yeah. Life. It's about getting folks saved. Getting folks on the way to heaven. And I'm here to tell you, without the convicted power of the Holy Ghost, you won't get there. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of folks that are depending on just before I draw my last yeah, breath, right. I'm going to say, Lord, save yeah. me. Amen. I wouldn't want to count on that. Yeah. Right. I'm going to tell you this. Have you ever thought you might go out before you get a That's chance right. to get That's on right. his deathbed? Right. There's a multitude of folks. Yeah. Uh, them folks that uh, went in that convenience store the other day, uh, when they come out with shot in the parking lot, they were counting on living till uh, a long lifetime. But God called them out. Now I'm here to tell you, the Bible said, for it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. Uh, we're going to all die. And we're going to all face judgment. And we're going to go when God gets ready for us to go. And we have no power in that. Amen. A lot of them trust in good works to get them there. I've said a lot of times, you know, that it's easier to get that old drunk to come to God or that old drug addict than it is that good moral person. Yeah. Because they think because they've been good, yeah. because they've, uh, they haven't uh, been a, uh, an, an idiot like I was, <laughs> You know, that leads me to something. <laughs> you know, I thank God for men of God that lived a good, clean life. Mm -hmm. That never was bad boys. Or, uh, boys. Right. That uh, went to church all their life. God saved them and called them, preached, put them in the ministry. And I thank God for that. I wish I could have been one of them. Amen. <laughs> But you know what? I'm probably more thankful than they are. 
Because yeah. you see, I know what God saved me from. That's right. mm -hmm. And I know what he done for me. And I know that when I wasn't fit to even uh, bend down and loosen his shoe hatchet, Amen. Mm -hmm. that he saved me and right. he cleaned me up and Amen. then called me to preach his gospel. And you see, I can tell other folks what it's about because I've right. been there and I know right. what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I wonder sometimes how you can tell folks uh, what it's all about if you hadn't ever been there. Right. Amen. Amen. That's right. But folks are counting on good works to get them to heaven. There's nothing wrong with being good. There's nothing wrong with working for God. There's nothing wrong with helping your neighbor. Nothing wrong with giving to the right. church. There's nothing wrong with none of this stuff. I would that all of us could be that way. But it won't get you to heaven. It takes the precious blood yeah. of our darling Savior Amen. to get you to heaven. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It takes the blood, folks. It takes the blood. And then I want you to notice this. Hey, some of them that are relying on mom and daddy Grandma and Grandpa, their prayers getting them to heaven. Yeah. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I pray for them every day. I ask God to watch over them, to care for them. I ask God to be long-suffering, to be merciful to them. I ask God to continue to deal with their hearts every day. Every day I pray that prayer. My sisters and my family, some of them, uh, they say they've been saved, but their life don't show it. And I pray every day, God save them. God don't let them die and go to hell. Right. <clears throat> but that ain't going to keep them out of hell. I can pray all I want to. And I believe God hears my prayers. And I believe God has been and he has long suffered toward them. But the decision as to where they're going to spend eternity has to be made by them. Right. They're the ones. That's the reason I told you my life first. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy right. and find grace to help in the time of need. You see, I had to pray that sinner's prayer when the Holy Spirit of God convicted my heart. I had to come and I had to right. say, Lord, I'm sorry of my sins and I want you to save me. I had to do that. You had to do it. Amen. My children and my grandchildren, if they make it to heaven, they're going to have to do it. They can't slide in on what I've done. Amen. They've got to go in on their merits only. Amen. Amen. On the merits of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the finished work of Calvary, that's all that will get them to heaven. Jesus Christ is the only hope for salvation. You know, I like that scripture that I just read you. Let me just read it to you again. Now, uh, he said, Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. What is he saying? He that believeth, I believe if you'll look at where, uh, uh, that word haste up, it said, uh, it means he'll not be alarmed. <laughs> he won't be worried about if he built on the right foundation about what's going to happen in his life. Because see, God's got it under control. He said he is a sure foundation, a stone 
that can hurt, that was capable of holding up the church that he purchased with his blood. Oh, I'm glad that I have a Savior today that's sufficient. I'm glad I serve a Savior today that is a stone that's capable of holding me. See, I ain't never seen nobody fall through a rock. <laughs> He said, well, preacher, you might fall off of it. Now the bigger rock as he is. <laughs> Whoa, he's a mighty rock. And I'm telling you, he's capable of holding me. And he's capable of holding that I've committed to him. And, oh, I thank God that I have that foundation. But then I want you to notice he didn't just say he was a rock that would hold us up. But he said he was a precious cornerstone. Now, <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lord. Let me help. Let me help you today. Do you understand what he's talking about when he's a cornerstone? When he said he's a cornerstone, see that cornerstone. Oh, anytime you're building a building, the first thing you lay is a cornerstone, mm -hmm. and that cornerstone ties the whole building yeah. together. <laughs> Well, preacher, what are you talking about? He said he was the cornerstone. He was he was the very one that tied the church together. He's the one that brought us together as believers in Christ. He's the one that holds us together. And that's a sure foundation. He's, he's the rock. It, they dug down and they found a sure foundation. Then they put that cornerstone on it. And he pulled his church together. And by his power... He brought us together. I'm talking about Baptist, Baptist, Holmes, Church of God. I ain't talking about the Baptist denomination. I'm talking about the born again believers in Christ. He brought us all together and made us one family in Christ Jesus. What glory to God. I'm glad that that church, my brother, the wind can come and blow and it can't beat it down. The storms can come. It can't beat it down. I'm telling you, there's nothing that'll tear this church down. He set up on that rock. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Amen. Religions come and go. There's been a lot of them that have sprung up, lasted a little while, fell by the wayside. Yeah. These cults, like old Jim Jones and that bunch, yeah. they sprang up for a little while and they fall away. But I'm glad, brother, 2,000 years ago, my Lord and Savior, when he went to Golgotha Hill and he gave his life's blood, shed it there on Calvary. Uh, brother, he, uh, let me tell you something, they didn't take it. He gave it. Uh, brother, uh, when he laid down on that cross, woo, glory to God, and he allowed them to crucify him. Uh, when they stuck that in his side and forthwith the Bible said came blood and water. Woo, glory to God. That's what brought us together. And that's what keeps us together. When he ascended back to the Father, I took his seat at the right hand of God. Woo, glory to God. He became my high priest. He became your high priest. And he's still holding the church together. It's been almost a 2015 years. Woo, glory to God. And she's still a clicking glory to God. Amen. And will be till he calls us home. <laughs> The world don't like this kind of preaching. But I'll tell you one thing. If you're ever saved, that's the way you're going to have to get saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, you remember the children of Israel when they got out there in the wilderness. <coughs> and they got to wandering around 
they got out there in the desert of Sinai, uh, Sinai. They didn't have anything to drink. And there was a stone. Yep. The Bible said that followed them around. Followed them through the wilderness. Old Moses speak to the stone and water come gushing out of that stone. You see, that's the same stone that old Isaiah was talking about. That same stone that followed Israel through the wilderness, that brought them safe into the promised land. That same stone will take me and you to our promised land one day after a while. Oh, ain't you glad today? that we have a sure foundation. Mm -hmm. We have a chief cornerstone that's holding us together, mm -hmm. that sees us when we're hurt, that hears us when we cry, that knows when we've been tempted. And what did he say, sure, I like this. He said he had not allowed us to be tempted above that that we're, uh, we were able, but with, with every temptation, make a way that we might escape it. Now, uh, when I studied, I studied that, and I, God showed me something that I've never seen before, too. Can, can you bear with me just a minute? Let me help you a little bit. He said, with every temptation. See, every temptation's not the same. We're tempted today by this and tomorrow by that. But he said that he wouldn't just, he wouldn't just make a way of escape for this temptation. But when the next one come along, he'd make, see you can't, the way of escape may not be the same way on every temptation. But he said for every temptation, he'd make a way <laughs> that we might be able to escape it. Say, so, well, preacher, we have to look for the way. No. Uh -uh. We ain't got to look for it. Because, see, he shows it to us. Sometimes we're too, too stubborn to see it. We're too stubborn to say, yes, Lord, I see it. And we just go on our own way. But he shows us the way out of it. He lets us know how to get out. And then it's up to us whether we follow after our lust. The Bible said lust when it's conceived bringeth forth sin. And sin when it's finished bringeth forth death. So we can choose to follow after that lust or we can follow the way of escape. Ain't you glad we serve in such a wonderful Savior today? Amen. Ain't you glad that He loves us? And that He, uh, when we're tempted, He even makes a way to escape it. Mm -hmm. He cares for us. And that's the reason He does that. But we got so many today that instead of following His escape route, You know, when there's a storm coming down in the, in the cuff, and they'll tell you, now we got to evacuate. I lived down there for a long time, worked down there. And when there's a storm coming in, Susie, they'd come on the radio and they'd say, now, this is going to be the evacuation route. And this is the way you got to go to get out of here. And if you tried to go another way, you'd get clogged up and you couldn't get out of there in the storm coming up on you. Yeah. But if you followed that, and see, they had studied that so long till they knew that if you followed that route, it may be slow, but they'd get you out of there before the storm hit. <laughs> Can you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. <laughs> see, God sees the storm coming up on us. Yeah. He knows, number one, how bad the storm is. 
He knows the dangers and the perils of that storm. And he's got an evacuation route already planned. <laughs> Woo! He's got an escape route Amen. to let us get out of there. Now I'm here to tell you, if we'll take that evacuation plan he's given, if we'll take that escape route that he's given us, brother, the harm won't come to us. We'll get out of there safe. Well, I'm glad that the shelter. That's the reason I like that old song that said sheltered in the arms of God. I'm glad I'm sheltered in his arms. Brother, when the storm comes, it can't get to me if I'll just follow his route. Right. And let him lead me safely. I hope I've been a blessing to you today. Hope I've been a help to you. If I have, give God the glory. If I had, yeah. give me the credit. <laughs> but trust him today. And I know it's hard. And in this time that we're living in, I told Susie the other day, I was thinking about getting some hogs. She said, I don't want no hogs. I said, price me, keep going up. You'll be wanting chicken, rabbits, hogs, and anything else you can get out here. <laughs> and it's going to keep going up. It ain't going to get no better, folks. Amen. If you got a place to put a hog pen, you better get you a hog. Amen. And a bunch of chickens. And a few rabbits. Yeah. You ever eaten a tame rabbit? <laughs> it's good. You ain't got nothing else to eat, I promise you. So he said, oh, I just can't believe I could go out there and feed it and then watch you kill it. I said, you ain't got to watch me kill it. <laughs> just got to eat it. He said, every time I took a bite of it, I'd I just see it. I said, well, you get hungry enough and you just close your eyes and take a bite. Amen. This nation's headed for trouble. Right. Trouble like we have never seen. Amen. It's coming. You say, well, preacher, we ain't going through the tribulation period. I agree with that. I didn't never say we would. But he said we'd go through the beginning of sorrow. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're at right now. We're sliding in it very fast. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some suffering that's going to be done by us as right. children of God before we leave this place. Yeah. But ain't you glad? It's just about the time that we think we can't go no further. He's he going to say, Dick, your lips, Gabriel. Call him home! Yeah. And we're going to go home. Amen. And while the rest of the world is going through hell on this earth, We'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. 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 Woo! Glory to God. That ought to make the dead as bad as my house shout. Right. Yeah. I love you today. I appreciate every one of you. Hope I've been a blessing to you. Don't forget our folks that are sick today. Pray for them. Pray that God get them back in the house of God. Service this afternoon at 2.30.